everybody, welcome to Casa Fea. My name is Eden and I'm here to remind you to please hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell. That way you get notified every time I upload a new dim. What's a dim? A dim is me doing it myself so you can do it yourself. Okay, that's enough of the silliness and let's get started on today's video. Hi everybody, thank you for joining me today. My name is Eden. And today I'm going to be DIYing a tabletop for my IKEA Entertainment Center. To get my measurement for my tabletop, I took the original length and I added the depth of the shorter table to get 73 and 1 8. For the shorter table, I took the original length and I added 8 inches to get 47 and 1 8. did a couple of sketches. This is like my first idea was to extend this out so it could be um, more balanced with the TV. And then I did this one instead of having to extend out, I add a piece of wood here in the center to extend it, but it didn't give me enough length. I really don't know which one I'll do. And I did a pattern up here. I might not follow it. I might do something different, but this is kind of like the idea I was thinking of doing. Well, might come out like one of these two or may not come out looking nothing like this at all but we'll find out okay so this is just footage of me cutting down the wood to size looks like i cut it right so i just need to continue this pattern all the way down to the bottom over there Once I had my framer together, I just kind of let it dry for the next hour, and then I came back to work on it. I found a bunch of scrap wood in the storage unit, so I'm actually returning half of the lumber that I bought from Lowe's, and I decided to use the scrap wood that I found in the storage unit to finish this. So this is my frame. I took the space in between, and I made seven cuts of the same size. And once I have my seven cuts, I start placing them in. I started at one end at the bottom and then I continued on the other side. And you'll see why in a bit. So the reason I start on the other side, I took my seventh piece that I had and I try to place it exactly in the middle. Once I had it in the middle, I measured the distance between these two center pieces and that's how long I need that's how I knew how long I needed to make the other cuts. So I made four of those cuts. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, for the longer piece, again, I took the measurements of the space in between and I made 15 cuts of the same size. And then I just started placing them all on one end. And you'll see why in a bit. So I started one end and I started laying my design. The reason I did that, so I could get the measurement of my last space right here. So I measure that space and I make two cuts for exactly that same length. So I lost my footage showing you how to use the pocket hole kit that I have. So unfortunately you're not going to be able to see that. So on to our next part of the video. So finished doing all of the pocket holes for this piece right here. Let me show you. So now I just need to go ahead and drill them in. So this is where I'm at in the staining process <laughs> so i started to stain this not sure if i'm really loving the color i did stain it the same color as i did the shelving because i kind of wanted it to match but i don't know 
Yeah, it looks a little too red than the color in the shelving over there, but I think it's because it's different wood, and then this is like a cheaper wood than the one that's on the shelves inside in the living room. So I think that's why I'm getting more of a red tone than a brownish gray. Okay, so I brought it in because I was really worried about the color. The color looks fine inside the house. It doesn't exactly match the board, but it's pretty close. Kind of worried there for a little bit. Okay. Okay, so these are the plugs for the pocket hole, and they're really easy to put in. You just kind of show them in there like that, and that's it. And the wood filler came in, so I guess I'll show you that. So there we go. Let's see if it focuses. It should be kind of easy, and you squeeze it out. Actually, this doesn't seem as easy as the min wax. That one came out a little smoother. Just use your finger. There you go. Easy as that. I'm going to finish this up because. I don't think you want to watch me doing the whole thing be boring. So hopefully by the time I'm done, I should be sanding and staining it again and then sealing it. I finished staining and sealing it. I brought it inside to see how it would fit. Kind of looking at it like this. I actually like the way it turned out. Um, I kind of wanted it to kind of look old aged a little bit. I'm actually happy how it turned out. Now I just I need to figure out this part. I want to extend the table just because of the TV. I think it looks weird if I if I left it short because then it kind of, I don't know, it doesn't look balanced to me. Also I wanted to extend it this way. I just don't know if I should add a leg here or I should move this over and do like a more Baby with wood, paint it black, and do something like a decorative, kind of like great looking thing. I'm not really sure. screwdriver to fit. I actually got one of those like bendable attachments for the drill bit so I'm gonna probably wait for that to attach the top but in the meantime I think I'm gonna build the legs for the back part. So I decided, oh, that's what I'm planning. I just need to cut the piece of wood. I'm gonna do like a um, rectangle in the back. It's gonna be black and it's gonna be slatted to help support the back edge. My solution because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do but I decided to do that and then that way I could just kind of stick like a basket underneath there for storage. Um, I could also put the um, Wi-Fi cable and like our cable box back there so you can't really see it. We'll see how it turns out. So I lost my footage of making the support for the corner back end of the unit. So pretty much this is how it's going to look like. I got two three by fours and I cut them just to the exact height I needed and then I got the one by ones to use them as braces on the back to make the slats and then once that's all together I adhere the car mesh onto the top. Hopefully that makes sense. So instead of using the ruler I'm gonna be a little lazy and just kind of mark off right here where it's at. So I know where the top is. Now I'll be back and I'll cut, cut these pieces of wood. I'm done for now. I just need to put the cord cover on and then put everything back and it's done.
Okay, so yeah, never gonna use these again. I made a big old hole, so now I gotta really patch that up. <laughs> okay, well, almost done. Okay, I patched it. Not too bad, just gotta wait till it dries and then I'm gonna have to paint it. More work, oh well. So once I got the mesh, all I did was measure how much I needed and I used those pliers you see to the right to cut it. It actually is really easy to cut and use. If you do this on your own, I would suggest adhering the car mesh before installing the backing to the unit. But since I had to wait for the car mesh to arrive, I did this way, but installing it is not really hard. I know you see me um, pre-drill a hole. You don't even need to do that. You could just use the screw and a regular drill bit and just hold the screw, drill it in, and it's as simple as that. today's video and one thing I've learned during the process of making my entertainment unit is that video editing and recording is not my forte I think I lost like half of my footage trying to transfer it over from the camera onto my laptop so sorry about that but other than that I thought the unit turned out great and I hope you guys join me on my next DIM you guys have a good day bye